Good evening and welcome to this edition of Talk Pixa. This week sees Papua New Guinea playing host to the 46th Pacific Island Forum Leaders Summit. The Pacific Islands Forum was established to be the main regional organization to promote cooperation and integration of governance in the Pacific region and align regional policies to further its members' shared goals of economic growth, sustainable development and security. This year, Papua New Guinea is host to the members of the PIF, many of whom have attained independence in the last 50 years. On tonight's show, we feature two important figures who feature prominently in this year's Leaders' Forum. The first is Dame Meg Taylor, Secretary General of the Pacific Islands Forum and first ever lady to hold the position. We spoke to Dame Meg on Friday and she explained the importance of this year's forum and the key issues that will be discussed and why exactly it's going to be different from previous PIF meets. Dame Meg, thank you for joining us on Talk Pixar again. Thank and you. tell us about the next week's meet where we'll be hosting the Pacific Islands Forum leaders. Well, first of all, let me say good evening to all of Papua New Guinea, and I'm very pleased to be back home. Uh, the 46th uh, Pacific Island Leaders Meeting will be here in Port Moresby from the 7th to the 11th of September. We'll have uh, 15 heads of government. Uh, Fiji will be represented by their foreign minister, so I'm very pleased that Fiji is back at the table. Uh, this will be this is the annual meeting that the leaders have every year and Papua New Guinea is the host for this year. And Papua New Guinea will take over as chair of the forum as of this meeting for 12 months. And how prestigious is that for PNG to take over that chairmanship? Well, it's important amongst the ranks of the Pacific countries that uh, uh, as you host a meeting, then you assume the, the chairmanship. But for Papua New Guinea at this time, um, after hosting a very successful South Pacific Games, and I want to congratulate Papua New Guinea on that. But particularly now with uh, the implementation of what we call the Framework for Pacific Regionalism right. that emanated from the work that our former Prime Minister Sumakari Marauta did, um, it will be a very different kind of leaders meeting. A meeting where there's been a, a process implemented that we were asked to implement, that is a much more inclusive process where Citizens of the Pacific wrote in and said, these are the regional issues I'm really concerned about. And we got 68 different proposals or submissions. We ran the, re the tests that Sir Macaria's team had put before us uh, around regionalism, sovereignty, market test, inclusivity, uh, duplication. And there are five key issues that will now be the focus uh, for the leaders to deliberate upon. And these five issues are? The five issues are, one is climate, the climate issues, which uh, was getting a lot of prominence, particularly because of the COP21 meeting in Paris in December, and the position the Pacific Island countries have taken, or the, the Forum Island countries, particularly around temperature and the loss and damages. So these are some, some of the critical issues that will be discussed. <clears throat> the second issue is ICT, communications, and, and how are we connected in the Pacific? What's the best approach? And what are the approaches that can be done on a regional basis to benefit all of us? Dame, you've mentioned climate change and you've mentioned ICT as two of the major issues. And cervical cancer, I understand, is another one. Indeed it is, and uh, the reason why uh, cervical cancer, the special subcommittee that did the screening of all the 68 proposals that came in, saw so this is a very important political issue for the region. Huh? Cervical cancer affects many women, particularly at the, in Melanesia and Micronesia, where we do have uh, statistics. Um, we don't have good statistics on, in Polynesia. but. You will have noticed this week, a lot in the press, uh, that the Medical Society here in Papua New Guinea has had their meetings uh, and their big focus on cervical cancer. So it, it affects women and girls, and in some of the countries, Vanuatu, Solomons, Papua New Guinea are doing a lot. And in Fiji, they're doing a lot in terms of providing um, the inoculation for 
cervical cancer to young women. Mm. So this is one of the other issues. And then there are two others. There is the issue of West Papua. Uh, and I use the word West Papua because that is what people in the Pacific who wrote into the special subcommittee, that's the language that they use. The Republic of Indonesia would use Papua. But West Papua is the language of, 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 um, of the, those who have submitted submissions. So Secretariat has used that. Um, the issues, particularly around human rights, um, and the concerns that people have in the region, which is very interesting because, you know, one of the original tenets of the Pacific Island Forum was around self-determination and political issues. But um, so that's the fourth issue. The fifth issue is around added value for fisheries, a resource that everybody in the Pacific shares, fish, a resource that's worth between 3.5 to 4 billion US dollars and the Pacific gets a return of 5%. So you've got some serious questions that our ministers of fisheries have been asking, Forum Fisheries Agency, and the parties to the Nauru Agreement in, um, based in the uh, Republic of Marshall Islands and Papua New Guinea an active member of, have also uh, actually raised the issue with us, is, uh, raised the issue with the special subcommittee that um, added value um, for our fisheries is such a critical issue in terms of greater revenue, mm. greater returns, something that the, the leaders will have to, well, will consider because these five issues will go to the leaders for their deliberations when they have their retreat next week on Thursday. Okay. And what's the process of discussions during the leaders' summit? Um, is there a set process that, that the leaders would follow discussing these issues and what would come out at the end of that? Well, Prime Minister, Prime Minister O'Neill will be the chair. Um, I've never been in one of these meetings, so I don't know exactly how they will conduct. But I, um, these gentlemen know each other, so issues will be put on the table. They'll have the discussions, and then there'll be, of course, um, an outcomes document that, uh, of the leaders' meeting after that. Mm -hmm. But the most important aspect of all this is that these issues are not driven by officials. Mm. These issues came from people in our region. And this is what the framework of regionalism that I spoke to you about, I think it was it in March when I was here, and we were given the mandate to implement this. Well, we've done it. We're implementing. Now we have to make it work. That's going to be the toughest part, and then report back to the leaders and report back to people in the Pacific as what we've actually done. But the fact is that people have been included in this process and it's not an officials driven process. It emanates from people and then the forum officials committee considers and adds their comments and then now it's going to the leaders of the Pacific to make some decisions. And what does making those decisions actually mean? It means, I think there are two aspects. One is about a deep originalism of having real discussions around issues that affect us. Secondly, it's about owning the politics of the region. Mm. Taking decisions about issues that affect the region and the leaders, owning it. And finally, I'd say in doing that, you change the development paradigm that we set or our, our leaders set the agenda for what is important for our region and discuss that with partners and donors and insist on them supporting what we, when I say we, I mean the collective Pacific uh, and our leaders think it's the most important of these issues. Would, would the way going forward, would you, would you be able to comment on how it was before? Well, my understanding was that uh, with the Pacific Plan, that many of you probably know about, uh, um, which had all the good intentions, but a, a framework that was, uh, well, a plan that was really driven, the issues driven more by officials rather than by the political leadership and, and by the people. And at one leaders' meeting, 37 issues were brought to the leaders. Well, the leaders don't have a lot of time to deliberate on 37 issues. So there's an endorsement of issues that are brought up. This time, it's a, 
I anticipate that leaders will have really deep discussions around this. And it's a much more inclusive process. The review that Sir Makera did on the Pacific Plan produced the framework for Pacific regionalism. The Secretariat was given the mandate to implement it and that's what we're doing. So the challenge for us after all this and with the other agencies or crop agencies in the region like South Pacific Commu uh, Community, SPREP and others is, uh, is what are we going to do with these and how are we going to then report back. So developing the indicators, the work programs and trying to make sure that we stay true to what the leaders have said to go and do. Mm -hmm. And it, it starts on, on Sunday? Well, some of the leaders, uh, the prior, I understand the president of uh, Kiribati will arrive tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. Sunday will be a, work, um, uh, you know, a workshop between civil society and um, that the uh, forum secretariat is organizing. But the official meetings will start on Monday with the small island states. Now the small island states, um, for those of us from Papua New Guinea, we should pay attention to. These are the most vulnerable of our neighbours. Uh, countries that have, like Tuvalu, that has, um, that is three metres above sea level with a six metre uh, ocean surge. Well, vulnerable to the forces of nature constantly. Huh? Isolation in terms of distance. Then you have Kiribati as well, and what's happening with sea level rises there. You've also got the Republic of Marshall Islands. You've got Palau. So, and you've got Nauru and the issues that Nauru faces. So I have, um, at, at our recent officials meeting, I've made a commitment that during my term as Secretary General, I want to make a special commitment to the small island states because I think these are the member states that are face serious and uh, climate issues, ocean issue, issues, and are the most vulnerable of our community. Mm -hmm. Then on Tuesday, there'll be the Pacific ACP, you know, the Africa Caribbean okay. Pacific, but this is the Pacific uh, component. We'll have discussions about how to improve those relationships with the European Union. Then on Wednesday, the formal meeting, uh, the, the plenary meeting starts and there'll be discussions there. But Thursday is the very critical one for the leaders because they will then go on their retreat and have a day to themselves and possibly an evening where they will discuss the issues that are paramount for the region. Then on Friday, they will have a discussion with the post forum dialogue partners about the issues that they have, that they have um, deliberated upon. During the week, uh, on, on the Tuesday, they will also, the Troika, that's the three countries, past, chair, mm -hmm. current, and future, uh, will have breakfast with the civil society because we're trying to get the conversation to be inclusive of what uh, brought uh, our own rep representatives of our communities think. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is at any point, is there going to be representation, say, from the European Union during discussions about, um, say, fisheries, or are, th uh, are those Union probably that will be, afterwards? Sorry, European mm -hmm. Union will be at the PACP, okay. and I also understand that there'll be a side event, I think, on Wednesday, on climate issues, mm -hmm. with the leaders to get them ready for uh, COP21, right. and European Union is. Uh, guest will be making some comments there as well. And will you also have representations from, say, neighbouring countries like Australia? Well, New Australia Zealand. and New Zealand are members of the forum, okay. so they will be there. Prime mm -hmm. Minister Abbott and Prime Minister mm -hmm. Key are due to arrive. Mm -hmm. uh, every other president and prime minister is coming, other than the Prime Minister of Fiji, mm -hmm. who will be represented by the Foreign Minister. Okay. Is the issue of asylum seekers going to be discussed? Uh, it is not on the, on the, uh, the leaders can discuss anything they want. Okay. We, have, we have prepared an agenda for them, but 
they can discuss anything they want. Okay, so anything is on the table? Well, if, if uh, I mean, wish. there's a formal agenda, but mm -hmm. if one of the leaders wanted to raise an issue, I mean, that's their prerogative. Mm -hmm. And how soon after, after the meet can we see things moving? Well, uh, we've done some preparatory work. Okay. If the leaders decide that um, all five issues will move and move forward, uh, we've tried to anticipate which direction the leaders would take and we've, uh, at the Secretariat, we've looked at, well, what will our role be in this and then, and how much will that cost? But, you know, we have other implementing agencies like the um, Environment Program, uh, SPREP, and also we've got uh, the South Pacific Community who has a big mandate in um, the implementation side of things. Well, the leaders will meet with us as well on the Friday morning and we will have to work through that. And hopefully this time next year before we go to Federated States of Micronesia where the next meeting will be, we'll, have, we'll be ready to report back on the issues. Okay. Yeah. The issue of West Papua is, is a very sticky issue amongst, um, amongst the region and especially with uh, the region's dealings with Indonesia and Australia and New Zealand. Um, is this a follow-on from the MSG? where West Papua was given observer status of sorts? Um, I think that the West Papua issue has taken on a different life, um, particularly amongst our, our young people. I travel through the Pacific. I go to the furthest of the eastern islands and people will t are talking about the West Papua issue. And I think this is a lot about what happens with uh, internet communication. There's a whole other body of discussion that's going on that's not in the newspapers, but it's in on the internet. And the countries that have taken a very strong position have been the Polynesians, which is which is quite extraordinary. But should we be surprised? We shouldn't be. Some of the leaders of, the, of Polynesia have been those who have been real fighters for democracy, self-determination and human rights. So we shouldn't be um, surprised by it. I think uh, what happened in, um, at the MSG was about more of uh, observer status, etc. Well, to be a member of the forum, you have to be a member state, uh, you have to be a state. So there's very clear, there's clarity about who can be a member and who can't be a member. Okay. Now, there's, um, you mentioned sovereignty before as, as an issue that um, a lot of the island states are dealing with. Mm -hmm. What are the problems with that? Well, regionalism requires all of us to give away a little. Mm -hmm. It might be good for me, but is, it, is, it, is, this, is one position, is the regional position better for all of us? That requires uh, foresight, it requires leadership, and it requires, I think, uh, a deep understanding of the common good and what does it mean for the Pacific. So what is it that we give away as a nation or any nation gives away because it's going to be better for all of us. And I think in the Pacific we've always had that, uh, what is, what, it's one of the issues that really ho uh, values that holds us together as peoples across the Pacific, uh, that we have our obligations, we are reciprocal, and we, we do care about the common good of the, of the Pacific. So I think what we're asking for, or what the people of the Pacific are asking for of the leaders is, think about the issues that we've given to you and deliberate on them and give us the leadership in it. And Let's hope that that's, well, I expect that to happen. I expect the leaders to give us that leadership. So, so economic might is, is of no consequence in a, in a meet like this? Economic might, uh, give me enough Papua New Guinea. Mm -hmm. Economic might can sometimes mean you either can be very selfish mm -hmm. or you can be very generous, or mm -hmm. you can be generous. I think for Papua New Guinea it's finding that balance that okay. what is the important for the people of Papua New Guinea, um, 
the, issue, the basic services that our people expect of our government. But I think Papua New Guineans have always been generous mm -hmm. with the stranger, or particularly with family on other islands. And you know, since I've been here, people have told me stories about just how our people received Pacific Islanders, mm -hmm. the curiosity, the interest, and then the deep affection and the relationships that were developed. And it makes me so very proud. Huh? I hope that that warmth can be extended to the leaders and their families while they're here and to their, their staff. And it helps me in my work as I go to all the countries that, uh, as a Papua New Guinean who's now the Secretary General of the Pacific, that I too have to give part of Papua New Guinea um, Put it, put it to the side because the Pacific is important. You're watching Talk Pixar. Doc Pixar also spoke to this year's host and incoming chairperson of the Pacific Islands Forum, Papua New Guinea Prime Minister Peter O'Neill. Coming off the back of a successful 15th Pacific Games, Prime Minister O'Neill understands Papua New Guinea's traditional and increasingly visible role both in the region and around the world. The remnants of Papua New Guinea's hosting of Pacific Islands countries for the 15th Pacific Games is still around and already PNG is again set to showcase its hospitality, something Prime Minister Peter O'Neill is very confident of. The success of the Pacific game, uh, is, uh, as you correctly say, has given hope to the rest of the Pacific that uh, Papua New Guinea can provide the leadership uh, that uh, is required. And many of the issues that we have on climate change, of course on connectivity, uh, trade, investment uh, in the region, uh, these are sort of uh, the issues that will be discussed at the forum that is coming up. We've got close to uh, 500 people who are going to visit Papua New Guinea over the next uh, week. Uh, some have already arrived uh, today uh, and of course uh, continuing to arrive over the next few days. Uh, all leaders of the Pacific are scheduled to be here, all the 16 countries uh, who are members of the uh, Pacific Forum and then the associate members and the observers are, are, are likely to be here. All have indicated that uh, they will tend, tend to turn up in PNG and uh, they are certainly looking forward uh, uh, to us uh, hosting again one of the best Pacific Island Leaders Forum meetings that is ever held in the Pacific. The 46 Pacific Islands Forum leaders will be discussing several region-wide issues ranging from climate change and connectivity to West Papua. Yes, uh, those issues are very relevant to the Pacific leaders and I think it's important that uh, they are uh, informed of what is happening uh, in issues such as West Papua. Uh, there will be some discussions around it, but many of our officials have already discussed these issues prior to the leaders meeting. So they have, many countries have taken positions on many of these issues. So uh, we will open it up to the leaders to accept those positions as recommended by the officials or the ministers of state who have been participating in many of these discussions. I, I also know that uh, we have issues uh, together with the Australian government on some of our own bilateral issues, uh, like the visa arrangements, uh, some of our boundary issues, uh, such as the uh, Torres Strait issues, where uh, we have said we want to have a look at the review of the, where the boundary line is, and also accessibility of families going in and out of uh, the border areas. Australian government has got some reluctance uh, on that part, but these are things we are going to discuss it in a mature and constructive manner. Also expected to attend this forum are PIF partners and associate members. And in addition to climate change, there is also the issue of fisheries. Yes, uh, we are very fortunate that the uh, Commissioner for Climate Change will be here representing the uh, uh, EU uh, organization in, 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 in the region. And they will be talking about not only climate change, but of course our access to the markets uh, uh, in EU for all our produce in the Pacific, uh, particularly fisheries. And fisheries is a big revenue earner for many small island Pacific uh, nations. And that is why it is important that uh, we continue to 
have a sustainable management of this big resource uh, in the large ocean that we have. And that is a key uh, issue about getting the benefits that they rightfully deserve. Uh, many of the Pacific Island countries are not receiving the benefits like Papua New Guinea does uh, because we are now going downstream where we have got factories uh, that are now uh, being set up in Papua New Guinea all around the country, which is providing employment, business opportunities for our small uh, businessmen and women, and, and of course increasing our revenue and the take on this large resource that we have. So we want them to uh, uh, understand what we are doing and hopefully they can also do the same in the, in the Pacific Island countries uh, 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 in, in many of the smaller ones. Papua New Guinea's increased visibility on the world scene is also being seen as a plus for the region. It is this visibility that Mr. O'Neill sees as being key to pushing important regional issues. Papua New Guinea is already providing uh, the leadership in that area. We are becoming a donor country. We have provided assistance to Solomon Islands. We have provided assistance to Vanuatu. We have provided assistance to uh, Fiji. We have provided assistance to Samoa, Tonga, and many of the other smaller island countries like Tuvalu, uh, like Kiribati, where there are some issues of disaster that they've been experiencing. Papua New Guinea has been a contributor to the recovery processes that has been going on. In case of Solomon Islands, we support budgetary support, supporting their budget. So Papua New Guinea is slowly becoming a, a donor country in itself. Even though we ourselves have got challenges, these are our people. Uh, they are uh, Melanesians in many cases, but they are Pacific Islanders in a lot of cases. And I think it is important that Papua New Guinea continues to play that role. Papua New Guinea is the only country that is the member of the APEC organization. There's no other Pacific Island country except of New Zealand and Australia. Uh, Papua New Guinea has a responsibility, as that membership, as a responsibility of making sure that we speak on their behalf. We make sure that trade arrangements and markets in the Asia region that is growing to be one of the largest in the world, our smaller countries can also have access to them like Papua New Guinea is having access to them. Papua New Guinea has recently visited India we have had a good visit from the Prime Minister of Japan who came through here. We have got a very good presence of Chinese businesses and Chinese uh, engagement across uh, PNG and the Pacific. So these are large companies, uh, large countries that are able to provide our market opportunities for our businesses. Uh, we must stay engaged with them. It is in our national interest that we continue to participate in a meaningful discussion, arrangements and trade and investment with them so that uh, we can continue to build our own economy. Uh, if not, we will suffer because there's no new investment coming in. When there's no new investment, there's no new jobs. And as a result of that, our economy will not grow. Uh, that is why we are making sure that Papua New Guinea continues to uh, be engaged with the uh, wider region in the Asia Pacific region and our obligation to the Pacific Island nations. And with just over a week away until our 40th independence anniversary, the Prime Minister shared some insight into his Independence Day message to the country. Our independence uh, speech will certainly be a uh, realistic assessment. There will be uh, 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 no uh, uh, self-glorifying in that speeches. It will be about the reality that the country is facing and where we want to take our country uh, into the next 40 years. That is the sort of speech that uh, we will present at the independence uh, flag raising ceremony and I hope that uh, our people will take on the message that uh, from humble beginnings we have now developed a nation that is now showing leadership in the region, that is taking its place in the global financial community, that has got an economy that is performing uh, globally one of the best in the world, and I think uh, our people are now starting to get the decent education going through, through the schools. Our health system's improving, our law and order improving. Uh, I think the great, it's a great story to tell. So uh, we need to uh, promote our country. Nobody else will promote us. We need to be confident of ourselves. Nobody will have confidence in us if we do not have confidence in ourselves. So uh, that's a sort of story that I will be telling on the Independence Day. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you very much.
The 46th Pacific Islands Forum Leaders Summit begins tomorrow, Monday, September 11. With the overarching goal of strengthening and enhancing Pacific regionalism, Papua New Guinea is not just playing host to a regular regional Pacific meeting. It is playing host to discussions that will dictate the development and future prosperity of the nations of the Pacific Islands. MTV will be covering the proceedings and resulting agreements from discussions this week. And until we meet again next Sunday, when we round up the 46 Pacific Islands Forum Leaders Summit, from Neville Choi, it's good night and pleasant viewing.